Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist with this tropical weather update for Monday, September 26, Hurricane Ian. Ian is now undergoing what's called rapid intensification with sustained winds of 85 miles per hour. That's 30 miles per hour stronger than this time yesterday. The storm is moving through an environment very conducive for additional rapid intensification. The hurricane is likely to max out to around 140 miles per hour Thursday in the eastern Gulf of Mexico off the west central coast of the peninsula of Florida. After that, environmental conditions will begin to hamper the storm, causing it to begin to weaken. However, as it weakens, the base of the tropical storm force winds will expand, affecting a large region of Georgia and South Carolina, including coastal Georgia and coastal South Carolina. So let's take an entailed look at Hurricane Ian. The computer models for Monday morning indicate the uh, storm gaining uh, organization and gaining strength. At the beginning of the uh, period, over here, when it comes into view on the southeast quadrant view here, uh, this will be on Tuesday afternoon, about 2 o'clock Tuesday afternoon. The storm will be located just uh, north of the western tip of Cuba, to the southwest, west southwest of the Florida Keys and gaining strength. Now, if we go through time, we can see the storm is moving northward. It's about right here uh, off the west coast of the central portion of the peninsula of Florida when it will be at its strongest at about a category, upper category three, low category four, perhaps up to 140 mile per hour winds uh, in this area right over here. But then the storm is going to start encountering some upper level wind shear and interaction with the landmass will cause it to weaken somewhat, but still very strong. This here is at eight o'clock Thursday evening. And see, the winds are starting to come in off the Atlantic Ocean as well off the Georgia and South Carolina coast. And this will be affecting our tides, pushing the tides about two to three feet higher than the normal values. And the normal values for this week uh, for the evening tides will be about eight feet. So that's gonna push it about 10 to 11 feet. And the flooding occurs at around 9.5, 9.8 feet. So keep that in mind as well. As the storm moves northward, it will continue to be quite strong. The winds will be decreasing, but the area of strong tropical force winds will be increasing. So that will cover a large area, just about all of Georgia into South Carolina with the potential for tropical storm force winds at 39 miles per hour. But there's also gonna be storm force winds of around 50, 55 miles per hour uh, in, in several locations as well, including southeastern Georgia and southeast South Carolina. Now, this right here is at uh, six or eight o'clock Friday evening. So, you know, all day Friday, Thursday and Friday are going to be really bad, particularly Thursday night and Friday into Friday night. Uh, according to this model here, the global forecast system, it will still be to our south bringing in strong southeasterly to easterly winds across the coast, pumping in another evening of very high tides across our area. Now, let's move ahead to the uh, time period of Saturday morning at sunrise. There, the storm is farther to the uh, north of the Georgia-Florida border, but still in Georgia. See, the problem here is it's gonna be a slow moving storm. Let's take a look at another model. This is the Navy Global Environmental Model. and uh, it's usually very good. Uh, in the past, it had a very strong uh, record of accuracy. And there it shows the storm at uh, sunrise, basically um, 8 o'clock in the morning on Thursday, right over the Tampa Bay area and uh, moving into the uh, upper portions of the west coast of the Florida Peninsula. But look here, very strong uh, winds coming in off the Atlantic Ocean and very uh, strong moisture content coming in with uh, heavy rains uh, moving into Georgia. This is Thursday morning. Now, as we go ahead into Thursday uh, afternoon and Thursday evening, the storm is still very strong and we're going to see strong winds. Now, this one is a little bit further east than the, G, uh, F, the GFS, the Global Forecast Model, and uh, this would give us higher winds in our area. So, you know, this, this would indicate that we could see some very severe conditions in our region. Now, as we go ahead in time uh, to uh, uh, sunrise Friday, it is still here. 
it is still here. It is a slow moving storm. And this is going to cause numerous problems. Number one, uh, with the slow movement and the heavy rains, that's going to produce a lot of precipitation. We're talking the potential of five to seven inches of rain across our area of Southeast Georgia and Southern South Carolina. And that's going to not only produce flash flooding, it's also going to produce a lot of river flooding after the storm moves away because this water has to flow somewhere and it's going to go into those rivers. Also, very high tides still associated with this on the Friday tide cycle. Let's go ahead to uh, uh, sunset on Friday and there the storm is now just to the north of Savannah, right on the Savannah River um, around Clio. And uh, there the winds will be shifting from the uh, southeast and east to the north to northwest and but very strong now i remember when matthew passed through now of course this is not a matthew but matthew was a little bit farther east and when it came up uh, we had those very strong southeasterly winds but uh, the damage occurred after the storm passed to the north of us and we got the wind shifted uh, in the opposite direction instead of from the southeast it came from the northwest and a lot of the trees that came down in our area uh, fell pointing toward the southeast. In other words, it was the northwest winds that blew them down. Now, if this scenario is, is uh, true, if it happens to be this way, expect to see a lot of tree damage in our area. And of course, with tree damage, you're going to get a lot of power outages as well. But moving along, here's the information from the National Hurricane Center. This was the 11 a.m. advisory. And uh, it shows the storm basically following that indication path of going up almost US 1, Highway 301 uh, into Georgia, uh, the center. Now, you don't focus on the center. Focus on this whole cone. This whole area where the cone is located is going to be seeing at least tropical storm conditions, if not storm conditions. Storm conditions, that's winds in excess of 55 miles an hour. And on the east side of this, expect to see isolated tornadoes, uh, maybe a little bit more than isolated, associated with the squalls. A squall is a short period of extremely heavy rains and very strong gusty winds and those are where you also find the short-term tornadoes so we're in that zone as well so it's not looking good at all fast you can get more weather information on my weather uh, and nature page at savannapat.name if you go down to the map here uh, just click on it and it'll take you directly to the national hurricane center it's time to start preparing for tropical storm conditions in our area. Start by putting your hurricane plan in place and closely monitor the forecast updates by tuning into your favorite local television stations and other reliable news sources such as our local National Weather Service meteorologist from Charleston and Jacksonville, Florida, and uh, also monitor your local emergency management agency. That's very important. It is quite certain that massive evacuations will not be needed, but those living along the island should prepare for some tidal flooding, particularly during the evening high tide cycles. Also, if you do live in unsecure mobile homes or dwellings, make plans now to seek shelter in stronger structures. I will continue to monitor this storm and advise you to do the same. You can find me on my website of savannapat.name or my Weather and Nature Facebook page and on Twitter at Pat of Savannah and on my YouTube Weather and Nature channel as Patrick Prokop. I have links to all of these in the description section below and you are invited to leave your comments in the comment section below the description area. Now if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and uh, also, if you subscribe to this channel, you'll be notified whenever I upload new videos, which during the hurricane threat will be daily. You can also catch me on my main YouTube channel, Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. There I post videos from my large telescopes outside in the garden looking at the planets, the colorful nebulae, and the star clusters, and those distant galaxies. Currently, Jupiter is at its closest it's been in the past 70 years. And I recently captured this video of the gas giant rotating. That red spot, the giant red spot, yeah, you can fit two Earths inside of that. That's huge. Well, thanks for watching. And remember, listen to what your emergency management has to say and heed to their advice. I'll see you later here on YouTube.